Alright, hello. So, uh, welcome to another video. It's me, Ahmed al -Duri. Now, I just want to show and share something that I do as a warm-up, uh, just to kind of get my hand moving and, uh, you know, uh, warmed up to shading and all that stuff. And basically, uh, it's, it's random shapes, kind of squares, cylinders, sometimes cones. And uh, you'll notice that um, a lot of these things have um, multiple values, like as if we've spray painted the, the thing uh, a dark color and a light color, or a light or a dark value and a dark uh, light value. So um, that's kind of the thing. Let me just kind of uh, flip through this real quick. And uh, you can see like uh, I, I do that a lot when I'm trying to figure out what to do. Maybe I don't have a specific thing in mind. Maybe the first 10, 15, even 30 minutes, I'll, I'll just be doing these kinds of very basic warm-ups of uh, three-dimensional shapes with uh, some lighting on it. So let's go ahead and flip to an empty page. Uh, yeah, so here's a couple more, you know, basic uh, shapes with with uh, lighting on it, some faces. You know, I'll I'll kick it off with these kind of shapes and then uh, sketch out some basic faces with different lighting on it for example that's backlight on both sides this is top light and then under light so let's uh, let me just show you how I uh, start these little shapes and basically there's a couple of things that you got to know uh, in terms of um, making the shape as well as uh, lighting it and putting certain values on it. so you know basically I just kick it off with a um, you know basic cube or square in perspective uh, letting the verticals converge a little bit so that it has a little bit more dynamics. And uh, there's something called a one, two, three read, and I'll show you what that means in a moment. Let me just shade this in uh, real quick. So that's one side, another side, and then the third side. Now, I'm implying that there's a light coming from the left, or maybe the top left, like uh, over here. You can imagine like a, a light source. Now the problem is that these two sides have the same value. Now it's a one, two read. There's only two different values. To get a one, two, three read is I think the most effective way to show form of a, any given three dimensional object. And it's a bit more complicated with circles and spheres, but here's a pretty good example. So we want each of these different, uh, uh, let's say faces or polygons to represent different values. And by value, I mean dark and light. So what I'm gonna do is make this one darker. All right, and then this one on the right, even darker as well. Now, all three of them have a, a different value. It's still implying that it's the same local color or local value. It could be, um, you know, maybe an 80% uh, gray or, you know, very close to white, but not really. And so the light coming from the top there is creating, it's sort of at an angle, right? So this side is sort of receiving light, this side is receiving more light, but, but the effect is there's a little pop that happens here because it's almost like simultaneous contrast of three different values uh, meeting together. Now, uh, from here, what I like to do is, you know, cut off a little corner as if we're slicing right through it, and then imply that this is a different uh, value and like uh, color, I guess in this case, it's value. So imagine you're taking a black can of spray paint a can of black spray paint and spraying just this corner. So what we're going to do is fill in the whole thing a little bit more like that. Now we shaded it in, but the other values still uh, feel relatively the same. So because it's a darker color, in the shadow it's going to be much darker too. So I'm going to just press much harder and get a nice dark value there. And we still want that one, two, three read. Watch what happens when we do that. It'll sort of pop out like this. All right. And now it looks three-dimensional coming out at us and uh, pretty cool, right? And so what I'm going to do now is uh, cast out some shadows. And again, this is just something I do to warm up. There's not, I'm not really uh, under pressure to make anything like designed or anything cool. It's just, you know, routine. Uh, so if there's a top light, I'm just going to cast some, some, some uh, let's say, sun rays. And so those are going to be parallel. And they're going to hit this point, that point, and this point. Well all four points, but it's, it'll do something like this, right? And because it's a sun, it's going to be parallel, so these lines will be parallel, right? So uh, that's at these three points. And where it meets the, like, where it meets the ground will depend on the position of the sun. So let's imagine that the sun is directly up there, you know, it's going to, it's like, if you take this point on the, on the grid, you know, it's sort of like that. And then from there, it'll cast out points. Uh, actually, I'll make it over here, right? So it'll be, Kind of like, uh, let's just draw a line from there to there, 
into there. Now I'm making this line or this dot kind of create vanishing points hitting these three points. And where those two points meet, or those lines meet, it'll create a shape like that. It's, I know it's a bit complicated. I, I think um, if you really want to learn how to cast shadows, I recommend checking out Scott Robertson's how to render DVDs and books because it covers all of this, how to do it for pretty much any shape. But that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, but yeah, so I'll just do that for cubes, uh, cylinders, let's do a cylinder. So basically it's like a little battery. And I'll probably do a different lighting scenario on this. So I like to put little um, strips of something on the edges and I'm gonna make them different values. Let's move that down. Uh, so let's make it as if the light is coming from here, like below it, right? So cylinders, if you, let me grab this paper towel. Uh, cylinders have a coarse shadow no matter which way you angle it. Uh, this is probably a bad example. Of this, uh, grab something that's cylindrical for you and see how the light reacts on it. But it'll have a coarse shadow depending on where the, the light is aimed. So in this case, it's coming from the bottom. I'm going to make a coarse shadow about right there. I'll shade the whole thing the same value at first and just kind of fade out and imply that the light is on this side. Now, I want to make these little ends much darker as if we're spray painting them a different value, whether it's a darker color or value, whatever. Um, and so what I'm going to do is shade on top of it again and press really hard at the core shadow like this and then fade out on that side. And automatically it just pops out. It looks like we uh, painted it with uh, something, right? So press really hard at the core shadow, then release as I go out to the other ends and then same thing on the other side. Now it looks like it has a different value. Now if the light's coming from here, um, let's see. Uh, well, there's there wouldn't be a cast shadow. Well, let's pretend there's a wall there. Okay, let's get a wall over there, yeah, like that. So the cast shadow probably, I'm just gonna BS it real quick. Something like this. All right, so uh, yeah, that's a kind of what I like to do as a warm up. Let's do another, another shape. We'll go like a, a more elongated rectangle. So, and the thing is, it's a good idea to do it in perspective because then you, you get a couple things out of this practice. You get uh, a warm up out of uh, drawing things in perspective and then uh, shading as well as understanding different value structures. Like knowing that the value group for this dark part is gonna be different than the value group for the light part because it's a different, let's say, material. Anyway, so uh, uh, it's gonna cut the ends off like that. In this case, we're gonna make the center uh, darker, but let's imply that the light is maybe, uh, let's, let's just make it top left, so over here. And we'll make the side darker, obviously, because the light is not hitting it. As well as this side, it will be the one, two, three read. And already just by doing that, it looks like the light is coming from the top left. But I want to make the center part darker. So I'm going to make this shaded in. And as I get to the other side, I'm going to press harder. And just, just like that, it looks like a three-dimensional object. We're going to pretend there's a floor there. We're going to cast a fake shadow. I'm not going to actually sit there and map this out for this one. It's going to be something like that. Right. And, it, and when, when you do this exercise, it helps you uh, kind of uh, feel out the three-dimensional space on the piece of paper as if there's depth, right? So yeah, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of it for the, for the shapes. I'll do that probably, um, like I said earlier, for maybe 10 minutes, uh, 30 minutes, sometimes even longer. Um, I like I like to smudge sometimes, like the the side that's in shadow, so that we don't have too much texture in there. Um, then erase out on the edges like this, and maybe sharpen up the uh, contours there. Oops, I missed. Anyway, so very loose, Does, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, then I'll go to uh, probably draw uh, faces, you know, just kind of random. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's pretty much what a set, uh, sketch session would be for, for me and, um, you know, as in, well, for warm up, warming up at least. Uh, but I hope that was uh, helpful, you know, kind of 
uh, you know, as a, as a recap, I do a lot of this as a warm up and then move my way to doing faces. Not every time, sometimes I'll do anatomy, uh, sort of like, you know, just, you know, breakdowns of torsos and figuring out uh, different, you know, uh, forms and, and whatnot. So uh, it depends. But uh, when I'm not designing something, when I'm not, you know, under pressure to make a, a full character or whatever, or painting, that's what I'll do. So yeah, uh, definitely do that. Um, and definitely stick around for more. It's definitely good to be back uh, on YouTube. But I am officially out of words, so I'll see you next time.